How did she die? Just kill her, and then she died. Did you hit her? Yeah. It is reasonable to expect parents to be upstanding citizens of society who are able to provide a good example for their children. However, what happens in situations where the parents are actually evil? Well, here are four examples of evil parents who eventually came to the realization that they had been caught red-handed. Starting with a woman who is suspected of locking her three small children in a bedroom so that she could go drinking at a pub while she left them unattended. Like, you don't know if she has walked out what time she could have left? No, I have no idea. I just woke up with a kid screaming upstairs. I mean, they've been screaming for at least a half an hour screaming. Okay, we're going to get the police out there to check on them. Yeah, they have to go through the back through the back second door for the upstairs door. Okay. Yeah, I'm putting this in the assignment until they're away. When the cops came, the first person they spoke to was the neighbor who had phoned them about the problem. Hi, did you call? Yeah, I called. Okay. Her husband's screaming her heads off like she's not home. This lady oh, does this a lot. She's not home. She's, I don't think she's there. They're screaming her heads off. She's got three kids. And sometimes she takes off and leaves them alone. They're babies. They're babies and pampers. There's no, as far as you know, there's nobody up there? No, I don't think there's nobody up there. All right, because I know she's got a younger brother because I broke the ticket. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they're screaming their heads off like there's nobody up there. I mean, how you can leave three Not kids? Just like normally screaming, just let them scream they're out. Screaming, falsely. screaming. You know, you figure you somebody would be up. I can hear from, from the bathroom upstairs. All right, because I know I got a little one. When she cries, I'll let her sit there for 45 minutes until she Yeah, but this is constantly happening. Whoa. This is not normal. After the cops got to the suspect's residence, they examined each door to see if they could enter, but all of the doors were locked. As a result, the cops returned to the neighbor's home and proceeded to the second floor to listen to the sounds of children weeping. I mean, I hope she's not out there drugged up or something. There's no way that's completely sealed. Yeah, the boss was not here. We're not getting no answer for that upstairs. And we can hear the children crying uh, in the downstairs room. Right? Yeah. Can you hear it? Okay? Yeah, clear as day. Yeah, you can hear it. Cool. Let me see. At one point, the cops returned to the suspect's home where the children were still trapped inside, and they made an attempt to warn everyone who was there in the house. Go through the door. I might be kicking it in. Is she a white, black, Hispanic woman? She hardly speaks any English. I mean, I find her kids outside walking through the alleys in the morning. Little kids. There's no other entrance to that apartment besides that door. Who's There's the no other entrance unless I call the landlord. He where is the, the landlord? The land. Well, he's got to be home in his house. Where, where's he that? He's on 88 on the Can right. you try to get a hold of him? I can try to call him and see if he answers. Please. I'll do that. When no one replied, the cop kicked in the door and entered the residence to rescue the children. Cleveland police, open the door. I'm kicking it in. Cleveland Police! Cleveland Police! Cleveland Police! Hello? Cleveland Police! Is anybody in here? Cleveland Police! Upstairs, but there's a mattress in the way. Hello? Hello? Are you okay? Are you okay? 
the intoxicated mother showed up out of nowhere and pretended that nothing unusual had occurred. After questioning her, seeing her in the situation she was in, and gaining an understanding of what she had done, the cops came to the conclusion that she needed to be taken into custody. What's your name? Okay. Liz. You smell like you've been drinking. You just come from the bar? Where you at? Benny's? Yeah. Are these yeah. your kids? Yeah. Are these your kids? All right, you know what? Yeah, she's... Put your hands behind your back. But wait, wait, wait. Put your hands. Let me see my no. kids. No. Your kids are fine. Wait, 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 wait. Stop. Wait, wait. Stop. Take it. Take it right now. Please. Relax. Right now. Relax. Put your hands behind your back. Please. Let me see my kids. Your kids are fine. We're taking care no, of them. No, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Do not turn your face. Oh, my God. What's up? Let me see. Let me see. No, you're not going to see them. Your kids are fine. We're taking care of them now. All right? You need to relax. Oh, my God. No. Please. No, stop. To sum it up, according to the police, the residence was filthy, had a foul odor, and was overrun with insects. In addition to this, the cops said that it felt about 90 to 95 degrees inside. On the other hand, Rivera, who's been charged with endangering the welfare of a child but is now pleading not guilty, asserts that she entrusted the care of the children to a supposed friend. Also, the three children are currently being cared for by a relative. Unfortunately, Rivera did not end the lives of her children, in contrast to the following suspect, who will really shock you. When the police arrived at the site of the incident, they found the drunk Chastity Bliss, who had slammed into a pole and a tree after losing control of her car. Sadly, the crash resulted in the death of a seven-year-old child and the injury of a five-year-old child. Before beginning the evaluation of her state of mind, the cop questioned her with a few questions. Do you have any weapons on you? No, I got nothing. Put this down. Okay. No, I don't have anything. Do you have any needles on you? No. No. All right, take a seat right here for now. Please. Please, where? After interrogating her some more, the cop finally made the decision to put her through tests. What, so where were you coming from today then, right now, before the crash? Where did you first come from? When you were driving on the road, where did you leave from? The house. You left your house? Yeah. Where were you going? To Christie's and I'm going to the store. Christie's and then the store? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, what happened with the crash? Do you remember it at all? I turned my head and looked at the girls to talk to them because they were fighting and I just turned my head. Okay. So you haven't used meth since yesterday then? Right, <laughs> right. I took my sleeping pill last night. Took your sleeping pill last night? Yes, I do okay. every night. I mean, everybody. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to run you through a few field sobriety tests here. Okay. okay? okay. Um, I'm going to check your eyes first. Do the uh, horizontal gaze okay. test here, okay? okay? All right. On this test, what you're going to do is you're just going to follow this pin. 
with your eyeballs only. As it goes from side to side, you're going to keep your head dead straight, okay? After she had failed the first test, the cop questioned her on her drug usage and advised her to be ready for the next test. How do, how do you ingest your pills and your meth when you take them? Do you snort them? Yeah. Okay. How do you, how do you explain having zero nasal hair in your nose? There? That was from years ago, probably. Years ago? Yeah. Did you used to sort Xanax or something? Yeah, Xanax. Okay. How long ago has it been since you done that? About five days when I did that last. Five days yeah. since you did that last? Mm -hmm, four. Okay. All right. Uh, because I smoked it after he passed away. Okay. Have you smoked any marijuana or anything like that today? I don't smoke marijuana. Okay. All right. All right, let's step over here into the middle so I don't, so you don't fall off the road here. The cop was aware that she was under the influence of alcohol and maybe drugs, and it was also evident that she would fail the second test as well. Anxiety's horrible. I can't do this thing. So I can't do it. Sorry, I mean, a lot of this is awful. The cop was giving the suspect instructions on how to complete the third test when the suspect asked for a jacket. Count 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, out loud. out loud, until I tell you to stop counting, okay? Do you have any questions about any of that? Three, can I get my sweatshirt on so I'm not shaking? So I'm like, I'm not like, is, it in is it in the back? Stay yeah. right there for a second. Put that on. Alright. Oh, that one's a good box and two. Just I'm gonna explain this to you one more time here, okay? Feet together, hands down to your side. With the straight leg, you're gonna raise one foot off the ground about six inches. You're gonna keep that foot parallel to the ground. All right, while you're, you're gonna maintain that position, you're gonna look at your toes you have off the ground, you're gonna count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, until I tell you to stop counting, okay? Do you have any questions about that? All right. Once she failed the third test, the cop realized it was time to arrest her for allegedly operating a vehicle impaired and transport her to prison. Is there any chance you're pregnant right now? No. Not pregnant at all? Uh, okay. Actually, that time right now, month. Okay. So I'm like, yeah. Right, turn around for me. Do you have any shoulder injuries? I'll tell you now. No. Not that you know of. Uh, my mom hit the window. My, my kids go. To conclude, according to the data found under currently housed inmates, Bliss is being held without bail on various felony counts. The following felonies have been alleged to have occurred. Aggravated vehicular murder in the first degree, endangering minors in the third degree, first degree involuntary manslaughter, and reckless homicide. While Bliss is an addict to both drugs and alcohol, the next mother on our list is a cold-blooded killer who will definitely scare you. If a parent doesn't deserve a child, this is the case. In other words, Larissa Rodriguez was responsible for the murder of her little child, who was five years old. Consequently, this is the point in the interrogation that she is attempting to justify her own killing. You know, I sometimes have to keep an extra eye on him mm -hmm. because I caught him one time going to the bathroom, getting toilet water and drinking toilet water. And I'm looking like, why is he, you know, like, is he even alert when he's doing this? You know, it would be like certain behavior, you know, like, and I used to have to stop him. He'd go straight to the refrigerator. I don't even know if he's like awake when he's doing this or what, if he's sleeping or, mm -hmm. you know, it's just things I had to watch out with him. Mm -hmm. And he would just like get into anything and everything. And I noticed that when he did it, even after Jordan was gone, my other son was doing it. My other little son, my four-year-old. And I'm looking like, is it because he watched Jordan do it? Or why is he doing the same thing that Jordan was doing? It's a good question. I don't know. I mean, is it a behavioral thing? I mean, it's just something that I, okay, I recognize that Jordan used to do that. You know, like, and it was just, it, and Jordan was perfectly fine. It was just something I felt like in that house too, like it was, not really wanting us there. At this time, the cop tried to encourage Larissa to reveal the facts about the situation by expressing regret for her actions. 
and luckily, Larissa fell for the trap and divulged a few details. I, I feel for where you're at because no woman should ever have to bury their child and I think you did the best you could with what you had, but that guy was using you. And that's why I told my sisters too. I said, if, if I ever get up out of here, I'm not going back. My sister says that they would help me get back on my feet, do what I have to do, because I was always, always had my own, always had my kids. My kids have never been a day without me. This is my first Christmas without my kids. At the end of the day, and, and, and I, I understand how you feel about if I ever get up out of here. I don't know what they're going to charge you with. My suspicion is it's going to be murder B. That's my and suspicion. And what gets me is he's not going to get charged for anything. Oh, now that's not going to be true. And um, it, that's not going to be true. And what is murder B? It, it's a, um, <clears throat> it's causing the death of another without a plan to actually do it. Following the interrogation, the cop explained to her what was going to happen to her and warned her that the consequences of her actions had put her in a very difficult situation. Is there any other questions you have for me at this juncture? Um, so they're going to go ahead and charge me today? Yes. I'm, I'm going to charge you today at some point and you'll probably go to court in the morning and then in the morning we're going to talk to the other half of the equation in Medina County. Good luck with that. Well, I, don't, I really don't care if he speaks or not. And here is a tape of an event that took place before the interrogation, which reveals that a cop was seeking to check on the well-being of the youngster who was murdered. However, at this time, the authorities did not know anything about the crime. Is there anything? Well, we got a call uh, wanting us to check on the, on the uh, well-being of the uh, five, four to five-year-old kid. How many kids are good? Okay. What can we see? Okay, I believe you. Don't mind me, man. Sir, I have them all taken out in my room. Okay. Okay. Negative, just have the brother of a Christopher like Rodriguez and his girlfriend, Larissa okay. Rodriguez. Let me know. Fine. All right. Hello, kids. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The fact that all of the kids were found to be upstairs, with the exception of the disabled boy who had been killed, to which the mother's response was that he was with her boyfriend out of town, was weird. Do you have a child with special needs? Oh, Jordan? Yes, I do. How old is Jordan? Jordan, he is just turned five. Where's but Jordan at? He's with his dad. He's visiting, going to be visiting for the holiday. He's not here with us right now, right now. For the Where's dad at? In Texas. He's not even here. Is that who you guys are pertaining to? Um, maybe possibly. What was the call mainly about? Just checking the welfare. And then something unexpected took place. Christopher Rodriguez, the boyfriend's brother, contacted the police from Pakistan to inform them that the child was murdered. Thus, that resulted in Larissa and her boyfriend, Christopher, being taken into custody. As a result, the terrifying reality was exposed in the courtroom. To come to a close, Larissa Rodriguez entered a guilty plea to involuntary manslaughter, felonious assault, endangering minors, and gross mistreatment of a body. As a direct consequence of this, Rodriguez was given a sentence of 25 years in jail. There's no question that Larissa is a horrible person. Nevertheless, the next guy did something so stupid that it may have resulted in the death of a toddler. Lucian Suprice caused damage to a school zone sign before fleeing the scene, during which he abandoned a baby unattended in the front seat of a stolen vehicle that was secured but continued to run. Therefore, this is how he ended up being caught. <laughs>
The police were first unaware that there was a child in the stolen vehicle, but after they made the discovery, they understood the magnitude of the potential issue that this presented. I don't see, I don't see a baby. I didn't either, but if you look at this one. There's no baby in that. Is there? I don't see any feet or anything. Oh yeah, there is. There's a baby in there. When the cops understood how difficult it would be to unlock the vehicle, they made the decision to devise a strategy. I can't get in the car right now, but they have a record coming ASAP, hopefully. They just bust his window out. I just don't want to shed glass if we don't have yeah, a gotcha. baby in there, you know, and the AC's on. If the AC wasn't on, uh, Absolutely. If no, the AC not. wasn't on, I'd say we'll break it, but the fact that it's on, I don't want to break glass near the baby. Uh, so. As a result, one of the cops made the decision to go to the nearest neighbor in order to search for any kind of tool that may unlock the window of the vehicle. I guess right here, this might work. This might work. Baby's starting to scrape in here. At this time, the operation had been successful, as shown by the fact that the cops unlocked the vehicle's window to rescue the child. While this was going on, a nearby neighbor made their way over to see the child. I'm gonna try to get one of these windows. Pull it a little bit harder. There you go. I get it. See, I come in and help out. Nice. We appreciate it. Yeah, just, she's fine. She's sleeping. Yeah. At long last, the child was rescued, and there were no more problems. What's up? Oh, there's a bottle. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what you want. Some food. Hi, this is Deputy Stubblefield, Blue County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we had an incident uh, where we ended up taking a male uh, to jail, and he has a newborn, I want to say probably about four weeks old maybe, um, in the vehicle, and we have no way of uh, getting in touch with any other kinfolk, and we need DCF to respond here to figure out what to do with the child. To conclude this point, Lucian Surprise was taken into custody and issued citations for multiple offenses, including child neglect, fleeing or attempting to elude law enforcement, leaving the scene of a crash with property damage, careless driving, driving while license suspended or revoked, leaving an unattended child in a vehicle, not using a child restraint, and running a stop sign. However, that's not the end of it. A crack cocaine scale and a small baggie containing crack cocaine were reportedly discovered by the deputies.